Hi guys, Christine here. Um, just thought I would talk a little bit about the altered book again. Um, as you can see, I've gotten more work done on the cover and it's kind of shiny right now. Um, what I had been using, and I forgot to bring it out before I started the video. Duh! Anyway, what I'd been using, and you can see my craft room is a little bit of a mess, is um, to apply the paint. I was using uh, two different colors of paint, browns, on this sponge and just dabbing as I went along and kind of blending the colors there. And you can see I got kind of a mottled texture on the book. I had done black paint over top first and covered the entire cover with that. I didn't want to cover the entire thing with the brown because there's going to be um, elk hide covering along here and the chain mail in the center. So there's certain things I didn't need to do, but I used this sponge and then I used one of the uh, um, craft paints that I got from, uh, that's deco art that I got at the thrift store and I had used because it was handy. I also have Liquitex soft body which I use on my canvases but I also thought for something like this it wasn't a bad idea but I used raw umber for this so I wanted a darker brown and a lighter brown over top of the black so that it made a darker color because it's going to contrast with this metal very nicely. Then um, now I've done step one of this. I have a product, uh, again, it's uh, Anita's Fragile Crackle. This is a two-step crackle glaze. And um, I bought this years ago when I worked on a canvas that I did that I wanted to mimic uh, a wall from uh, like a house in Tuscany or something when I did a painting for somebody. So, um, this, you can find similar products that'll do the same thing. What this does is it puts a crackle finish on top of whatever you're working on. And, um, you can do a fine or a coarse crackle on it, um, depending on how thick the layers are. Now I did the layers both, you're supposed to take step one and do two layers of it drying in between each layer. I did thinner layers on each one because when you look at leather, now I don't have, I've got suede handy, which doesn't help, but if you're looking at a smooth leather, and that one's buried, I swear, I'm just not prepared for this darn video at all. Anyway, some of my stuff is still in boxes. Now you can see that there's a texture here, but if you look at like buckskin or something like that, you'll see where there's kind of really fine wrinkles. Um, as the leather gets older, sometimes it will crack apart, and that's the look that I wanted. Oh, by the way, there's Oscar's footprint. He did that on my chair, too, that I sit on down here, so I think I'm going to repaint as much of the chair as I can around his black footprint and do a funky kitty chair out of this thing, and I don't know. It's kind of naughty of me, but I might just set another tray of paint out <laughs> and have him help me with it again. I don't know. I want to preserve his feet because um, he's getting to be an older boy. And so anyway, back on topic, as Oscar meows too, um, I did two thin coats of step one here. This is the preparation coat basically, and it has to dry completely. It's not even tacky right now. I'm going to move on to step two, and um, this one, uh, you just apply brushing it on, and then let it do its magic. And the cracks are actually going to be real cracks in the finish. So you can take like a brown or something and kind of brush, off, you know, paint it on and then brush off the paint really quick. and and stick stuff inside those cracks so that they are accentuated more. And then you're supposed to take a glaze or a varnish over top to preserve everything. Um, I don't know if I'll do the varnish because I've got the chain mail there. Um, thank you, Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I may not do the varnishing step. I don't know. But anyway, I was just going to take 
um, second brush, uh, second layer and do that. I have my Mod Podge brush that I used. I've actually recovered this brush because I insisted on keep using it and washing it over and over again and the bristles are soft again. Don't use a good brush for these projects. I have resigned that this is no longer a good brush. But um, for doing these glazes and stuff, sometimes you can really wreck your brushes. So you want to have one brush that you do just for glaze work, for Mod Podge work, anything like that. And so that's what this one has become. It's retired from face painting. So I'm going to take care of that. And then um, I may take the lighter brown over top of the crackle when it's done. And the crackle takes about 24 hours to really cure nicely. So I might take the light brown of that, you know, just to kind of lighten things up. Then again, I might just leave it. It depends on the look of the crackle. But when I get the crackling finished, I will do another video just to show you how this product works. It's really nice. And again, it's uh, Anita's Fragile Crackle. And uh, it's fun to have. And one set of bottles will last you a long time. So it's worth an investment. All right, that's it. Thank you. Blessed be everybody.